season here in Southern California, so there is an abundance of citrus growing anywhere you look. My brother and my sister-in-law have a beautiful lemon tree, and last week she brought me over a great big bag of lemons, and since my grandson John was with me, we decided we would make some lemon curd. Lemon curd is not complicated to make, it just takes time, a lot of whisking, and a lot of eggs. But we did it. Um, we came up with one little half pint jar and then a couple little jelly jars. So I'm going to take one over to my mom's this afternoon. We are going to do a little bit of sewing. But if I'm taking lemon curd, I thought it would be a good idea to bake up some really simple scones. This is a recipe I have shared with you before and I will link it again in the comments. I've pre-measured everything, so let's go ahead and get these whipped up. And you know I'm going to save a few back for me, and we will go ahead and sample one during our tea time. I've pre-measured the flour already, so that is what's in here, and I'm just going to mix all of my dry ingredients. We will finish up with the wet ingredients over here, use our hands to do a little bit of mixing, and get them in the oven. I decided not only to make a little icing for these, but I'm also going to add just a little bit of lemon juice.
welcome back to Tea Time. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about life changes. For me, um, since the beginning of the year, that has looked like my husband retiring. That has looked like me not having so much time um, unaccounted for, maybe. Um, that has looked like a little bit of difference in our budget, although, praise God, my husband had the forethought um, and the knowledge to plan for us uh, to live in a comfortable way. And we had, like I told you, downsized a few years ago, knowing that this day would come. We went from having a very large mortgage to not really a mortgage at all. So all of those things in pre-preparation helped us with the financial side of it. But that that is a big part. I'm not going to downplay it. If you are struggling on a budget or on a fixed income, I don't want to downplay that because that's, that's a huge life change. But for us, it's been more of a attitude adjustment, maybe. But actually, I've been pleasantly surprised. I thought... Um, I thought I was really going to feel like uh, closed in. Does that? Uh, I thought I was really going to feel his presence in my day to day more. But um, as it turns out, I'm really loving having him home. Not that I didn't think I would love it, but I just thought um, it would be a bigger change for me. But. For us, we are both very independent. We both have our own hobbies. We both have our own uh, friends, um, our own routines, our own passions. So that keeps us um, out of each other's space, out of each other's hair, maybe, um, for a good portion of the day. My husband loves golf. He is a very talented musician, plays, plays many different instruments. Um, he is much more fitness minded than I am and where we live there's lo um, beautiful facilities, walking, hiking, um, biking, swimming, a weight, a gym. Yeah, you can tell how I, into that part I am. I can't even think of what it's called. Those are all things that are right up his wheelhouse. I'm more of a homebody. I love to be in the garden. I love to sew. I love to bake. Um, I love spending time with my mom, doing things at church. So we kind of have built in space, which I think has been really helpful. But that doesn't mean it hasn't been an adjustment. I love to wake up in the morning and have just my quiet time, have peace, have no noise. I'm not someone um, who needs a TV running or a radio or a lot of people like just that background noise. That's not me. I love silence most of the day, but especially in the morning. Whereas my husband feels energetic in the morning and he wants to get up and he wants to strum his guitar or whatever he wants to do. So we've had to make some adjustments there. He does know when I'm in my quiet spot on the sofa um, that I really am not ready to have a big, drawn out, important conversation. So he's been very respectful. He'll come out and heat my coffee a, a little bit for me, and then he'll go back into his uh, room and he will do whatever it is that he does in there. So we're making those adjustments. My question for you, and I'm generally curious, how have you adapted to changes in your life. And it doesn't have to be a retirement. It could be, as we kind of discussed last week, somebody moving back in or maybe some added responsibilities. How are you adjusting to those life changes? I've had a few moments, and you know I will always be honest with you, there have been times where I've been a little bit frustrated or even just a little bit um, disoriented, kind of. I can't get my feet, um, I can't get my routine the way that it used to be. I'm, I'm used to cleaning on certain days and crafting and gardening. I'm a very scheduled person. I love planning. Not always great with the follow through, but I do love to plan my days out. So there's been a little bit of an adjustment there, but overall, I think we're doing really good. 
So tell me, what adjustments have you had to make? Have you dealt with um, retirement years or empty nest years? How is all that going for you? Share that in the comments. Um, as always, thank you so much for um, giving me so much positive feedback about this tea time. I really enjoy my chats with you. I am gonna get back in the kitchen after I finish my scone and my tea, and I'm gonna pack a, package up a little gift bag for my mom. So I want you to join me for that. So let's get back to the video. The scones are ready. I wanna put this little gift bag together for my mom. I'm about to head over to her house for our sewing day. As you know, she just turned 90 and she is on a mission to use all her fabric up. And if you knew my mom's fabric stash, you would find that laughable, even if she had 50 more years to go, but she's trying. So we are making aprons from her stash. She has already cut them out. I will share, I'll try to share as we're there. That will be fun. Um, and I definitely will show you what she has cooked up for us. But before I go, I actually am taking her a couple of things. I'm taking her the scones. So I am just going to put it in this very cute Pioneer Woman Tupperware-ish looking container. I did end up cutting the scones. I don't know if you can see. I ended up cutting the scones um, a little smaller so that there would be more and they were kind of large and they puffed up quite a bit. So I have iced them with um, lemon icing, which is just powdered sugar and some of the lemon juice from the, the fresh oranges. So I'm just going to pack them in here, as many as I can get, because there will be three or four of us sewing today. I don't want to stack them because of the icing, but I may, and then somebody will just get icing on the top and the bottom, which is not a bad thing. Let's see how I can get these in here. There's another one. And we'll do that one that way. And one more. I think I can fit one more in here. Oops, how about that way? So there we go. I have six, seven, seven scones in here to share. I have this little um, jar of, jelly jar of lemon curd. So I'm going to carefully pop the lid on. And then I made bread yesterday, so she is uh, she's my mom, so she loves her bread just like I do. What I do when I'm going to gift bread, or even when I'm going to save it for myself, I save my old sandwich bags of bread because if they keep the store sandwich bread fresh, I'm sure they'll do the same with mine. I am going to go ahead and wrap it in the parchment paper as well. And now if I was gifting this, um, I used to sell bread. If I was giving it to a customer or gifting it to neighbor or something, I would put twine and make it, sorry, that's loud. If I was gifting it to a, a neighbor or um, a friend as an actual gift gift, I would twine up this parchment paper and give it to them like that. But since I'm giving it to my mom um, and I know she's going to eat it right away and slice it and all of that stuff, I'm gonna put the parchment paper right into the bag. And then I will just get out a twist tie, which don't we all save every twist tie? Don't we all save our twist ties? Um, I'm just gonna put a twist tie in it, on it, around it. There's the bread. I have my gift bag. I am thinking I will put this on the bottom. I don't know that that's good. It fits perfectly. I'll put the bread on top of that. And, and I will just sneak in the little lemon curd there. And because I want her to feel special, I always keep this um, craft color tissue paper because honestly, you could put a ribbon of any color on it and it would transform it to whatever occasion. Put some tissue paper on top, grab my sewing machine, and I'm gonna head over there 
for a lovely afternoon. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had fun bringing it to you. Um, are you a gift giver? Do you like packaging things for others as much as I do? Leave it in the comments. If you haven't subscribed, of course I'd love to have you do that. That's it for today. I will see you in the next video.